The swimming instructor said, Sausage, I'm going to throw the brick in. Sausage was the nickname that my friends had given me. It was a brick with a bit of old white flannel round it to make it show up underwater. Sausage, I'm going to throw it in and you go after it. Go after it, Sausage, and get it before it reaches the bottom and settles in the mud or you'll never get it. He'd made everyone come out of the water to give me a chance and they were standing, watching. I could see them blurred along the bank and I could hear them talking and laughing, but there wasn't a sound in the water except me, just treading water gently, waiting. And then I saw the brick go over my head as the instructor threw it, and there was a splash as it went into the water ahead of me. And I thought, I can't do it. My legs won't upend this time. They feel just flabby. They'll float, and they won't upend. They can't upend. It's different for ducks. But while I was thinking all that, I'd taken a deep breath, and then my head really went down, and my legs went up into the air. I could feel them there, just air around them, and then there was water around them. Because I was going down into the water, after all, right down into the water, straight down. At first my eyes were shut, although I didn't know I'd shut them. When I did realize, I forced my eyelids up against the water to see. Because, although I can't see much without my glasses, as I've said, I don't believe anyone could see much underwater in those ponds, so I could see as much as anyone. The water was like a thick, greeny-brown lemonade, with wispy little things moving very slowly about in it. Or perhaps they were just movements of the water, not things at all. I couldn't tell. The brick had a few seconds start of me, of course, but I could still see a whitish glimmer that must be the flannel round it. It was ahead of me, fading away into the lower water as I moved after it. The funny thing about swimming underwater is its being so still and quiet and shady down there, after all the air and sunlight and splashing and shouting just up above. I was shut right in by the quiet greeny-brown water, just me alone, with the brick ahead of me both of us making towards the bottom. The ponds are deep, but I knew they weren't too deep. And, of course, I knew I'd enough air in my lungs from the breath I'd taken. I knew all that. Down we went, and the lemonade look quite went from the water, and it became just a dark blackish brown, and you'd wonder you could see anything at all. Especially as the bit of white flannel seemed to have come off the brick by the time it reached the bottom, and I'd caught up with it. The brick looked different down there anyway, and it had already settled right into the mud. There was only one corner left sticking up. I dug into the mud with my fingers and got hold of the thing, and then I didn't think of anything except getting up again with it into the air. Touching the bottom like that had stirred up the mud, so that I began going up through a thick cloud of it. I let myself go up, you know, but I was shooting myself upwards too. I was in a hurry. The funny thing was, I only began to be afraid when I was going back. I suddenly thought, perhaps I've swum underwater much too far. Perhaps I'll come up at the far end of the ponds among all the fishermen and foul their lines, and perhaps get a fish hook caught in the flesh of my cheek. And all the time I was going up quite quickly, and the water was changing from brown-black to green-brown, and then to bright lemonade. I could almost see the sun shining through the water. I was so near the surface. It wasn't until then that I felt really frightened. I thought I was moving much too slowly, and I'd never reach the air again in time. Never the air again. Then suddenly I was at the surface. I'd exploded back from the water into the air. For a while I couldn't think of anything, and I couldn't do anything, except let out the old breath I'd been holding, 
and take a couple of fresh, quick ones, and tread water, and hang on to that brick. Pond water was trickling down inside my nose and into my mouth, which I hate. But there was air all round and above for me to breathe, to live. And then I noticed they were shouting from the bank. They were cheering and shouting, Sausage! Sausage! And the instructor was hallooing with his hands round his mouth and bellowing to me, What on earth have you got there, sausage? So then I turned myself properly round. I'd come up almost facing the fishermen at the other end of the pond, but otherwise only a few feet from where I'd gone down, so that was all right. I turned round and swam to the bank, and they hauled me out and gave me my glasses to have a good look at what I'd brought up from the bottom. Because it wasn't, it was just about the size and shape of one, but it was a tin, an old tin box with no paint left on it and all brown-black slime from the bottom of the ponds. It was heavy as a brick because it was full of mud. Don't get excited, as we did. There was nothing there but mud.